I'm over at Dana Line's Tumblr site. This individual, he is a Yahoo Finance contributor, partner at J Lines Fund Management, so he has his own shop. Anyways, this article is called Why is VIX Volatility at Crisis Levels? My opinion on the volatility index is that we're going to see a higher VIX this year and also in the coming year. The reason why I say that is that volatility has diminished there's so much complacency in the financial markets that it's bound to come back that was my thesis and this is what I said as my prediction in 2014 and we did see a huge spike up the last day of the year in 2014 when it came to volatility but let's just look at this article in this era of financial engineering we have new ways of measuring all matters of behavior in the markets we have derivatives and second derivatives and second derivatives on derivatives by now most people are familiar with volatility indexes the VIX which measures volatility on the S&P 500 now there is even a volatility index for the S&P 500 volatility index the VVIX according to its publisher the CBOE is an indicator of the expected volatility of the 30-day forward price of the VIX. Lately, the VVIX has been exhibiting some interesting behavior. Before I get into this article, I just want to say that I am long volatility. It's not that many shares, but it's basically me shorting the XIV. And what I've been doing is every time the VIX has a pullback, I just put the short on the XIV, which is a short volatility index so I just wanted to get that out there before people are saying that hey you are pushing your own agenda but anyways typically 90 percent of the time the VVIX ranges between 60 to 100 in the past hundred excuse me in the past few days the 21 day average approximately one month of the VVIX reached a level of 110 since the inception of the VVIX in 2007 this is just the fifth time in a fifth time its 21 day moving average has gotten that high the four other occurrences the other four occurred during the times of legitimate or pending market turmoil so if you look at this graph over here the VVIX 21 day average when it rose above 21 days I mean when it rose above 110 we tend to see some interesting patterns. August 2007, let's just look at this. Hit control and plus at the same time if you have trouble viewing. That was when subprime started to occur. October 2008, Lehman Brother crashed. They were trying to institute TARP and all those government programs. May 2010 was the flash crash. August 2011, where you're starting to see gold at its all-time high or close to it so, uh, the debt ceiling slash downgrade crisis and then the next 21 day moving average above 110 on the VVIX is January 2015 now you have to realize is this going to follow the same pattern as the last four events we don't know we shall see I mean, you have to realize that the VVIX has only been out for approximately seven years. So that's not that much of a time frame for this data. So we could just read a little bit about the article and I could talk about what's going on in my head. So what's with the current reading? Well, what you do need for VIX volatility, ups and downs, of course, but especially ups. How do you get ups in the VIX by the market going down? Outside of the regular but moderate B bottoms recently, the equity market has been especially benign, at least as compared with the prior VVIX spikes. During the prior four spikes in the 21-day average VVIX, the market had sold off over the prior month by 10%, 30%, 12%, and 17%. At the low close of the recent sell-off on Wednesday, the market was down a whole 4%. In December, when the VVIX, not the 21 day average hit a recent high of 138 the S&P was down less than 5% at a slow point that's quite a reaction for such a small sell off of the 233 days since 2007 in which the S&P showed a 
month loss of 5%, the VVIX just averaged 98. So this individual is saying that once we get a VVIX hitting 110, you tend to see a lot of volatility markets. Markets tend to go down and this individual is seeing downside in the market. Now we shall see whether this case is true. Like I mentioned before, I do expect to see more volatility. And what we're going to see in the coming year or next year or so, two years, is that more people are going to be in cash right now. I think when you see indicators like this, we are seven years into a bull market, you have all this margin debt. You're going to see more people move into cash. You're going to see more caution in the financial markets. And I believe that a lot of people are viewing cash as king right now. I mean, let's look at a few of these sophisticated investors right now. So Jeff Gunlodge, the bond king, who has a decent track record, and also what I read, he has a libertarian bias, but he really doesn't talk about it. And if you look at this article over here, you should look at what he's doing with his own money. A sophisticated investor like him. He, number one, he's saying that he isn't as bearish on Russian securities as everyone's talking about. That, that's quite interesting. That's one thing. I am long a Russian ETF right now. I think I have gone in there too early, but who knows? And then let's look at this part also. The question was asked, seriously, how does your personal portfolio look like? Most people's risk profile, Gun Lodge responds, including mine, is way too low. I have the disease as well. I do not take enough risk. That is because I just do not like to lose. I am a buy low person, not a buy high person. So at present, I hold more cash than I ever had. Okay. He said that I have more cash than I ever had. You have a sophisticated individual like Gunlaj saying, I have more cash than he's ever had. If you forget about the art about double line, and when I look at stocks and bonds and other financial assets, then I'm probably at 40% cash. And I do not feel like I'm losing very much. So this guy, Gunlaj, he's in cash or he's in a significant portion of cash compared to where he usually is at. And if you want to look at some individual like Buffett, so let's look at Berkshire Hathaway and Warren Buffett. And this is from November of this last year. And if you look at this one part about cash, let's look at this. Lastly, we can't talk about Berkshire Hathaway without mentioning its pile of cash. The company entered the quarter with more than $60 billion in cash on its books. That's a large sum. Warren Buffett likes to keep $20 billion around sitting as insurance for the insurance businesses. That left more than $40 billion for acquisitions. So he's piling into cash. Gwyn Lodge is piling into cash. And let's look at this one other interesting note. I'm at StockTwits and this individual known as Jesse Felder. And he's talking about what I'm talking about. He's talking about Buffett and Gwyn Lodge. And what he's saying is that in contrast to Buffett and Good Lodge, invest individual investors now have near record amount allocated to equities, right? The top you could see in 2000, and you see more households are getting into the market. So you have these sophisticated investors like Gun Lodge, you have Warren Buffett in large amounts of cash. These guys are getting into cash well individuals are slowly but steadily starting to pile into the stock market. So the, this kind of reminds me of all these guys getting into the top, rich guys saying, hey, you know what, maybe we should take a break and get in later. So my philosophy is in the next year or so, try to raise as much cash or, or go short. And I do see a deflationary head fake, especially with the price of oil now going down low. Now, that being said, is the Fed going to have QE4? We shall see. There are indicators saying that, hey, we're going to have QE. Some indicators saying that we won't, this and that. So, we shall see how it goes. But anyways, I do expect to see more volatility. I'm going to be trading around it as a disclosure. 
right? And when volatility goes down, I get back in. Rinse and repeat. That's what I'm doing on my end. But on the other end is I just want to get out of some of my positions, make a quick buck or two, get into cash, and then I believe that we're going to have a great buying opportunity. But that won't be coming for the next few years. I mean, yes, good trade here and there. They're going to be good short-term trading opportunities, but from a longer-term big picture, I don't see that until late 2016, early 2017. But I could be wrong. I'm looking at, once again, Dow 11,700, but we shall see if it gets there. Anyways, thanks, to li thanks for listening to me, guys. I'll talk to you later. Leave your thoughts below. What do you think about cash? Are you getting into cash like these gurus, Warren Buffett and Gundlach? Let me know. Thanks. Bye.